You see my little friend on my head? Yeah, I'm just seeing you know. Now I feel I'm on top. Is he eating my hair or just playing around? All right. So, here I sit with a baby possum on my head. <laughs> In the mandir of the ashram at Primadrala on this Monday night of April 20th, 2009. And people are probably wondering, why do you have a possum on your head? Well, I have a good explanation for that. <laughs> the day after... Oh, he's coming down now? The day after Easter Sunday, we had this big ceremony in the backyard, in the gardens here, where we had a puja commemorating the season of spring and consecrating the gardens in full bloom and invoking all the nature spirits and the divas and the masters and angels to bring forth blessings and abundance and new growth and new beginnings. And it was a beautiful ceremony, the most beautiful spring ceremony we've ever done. And the next morning, a, two auspicious things happened. One, two f finches, a little male and female, started making a nest right over the picnic table underneath a hanging plant. And Marcus also found a big pool of blood on the patio. Is he on the back now? Mm -hmm. He's kind of... Is he on me still? Yeah. 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 It's on and, your shoulder. And um, he found this big pool of blood and an animal was killed up on the patio roof and I told him it was a possum that an, I had seen in my third eye that an owl had pulled a, the possum away in the night. And then four days later, we're having lunch and this little baby, we were having lunch on the patio and this little baby came walking out. This would now be last Thursday. Today's Monday. And this little baby came walking out and walked right up to us and looked at us and Are you down there now? Down He's coming down my back. Come here. There you go. Come here. There we go. And so um the little baby came out and then that night that night another one came on the patio at dinner. It was about three times the size of this, but he was also a baby. And um, we called, we did some research, and we called the Possum Society. And they said, at this size, all furry, even though the mother's dead, they're, they can fend for themselves because we were going to bring it to their society. And they said, no, they're on their own. They've gone four days. They're fine. So then uh, we went on our vision quest to the desert. I was gone for three days. And over the weekend, this little one was found in the pool. He fell in the spa and Peter saved him. And tonight, that was, excuse me, two nights ago on Saturday. And then tonight, I was out in the Kuan Yin garden, sitting on the bench talking to Chris. And I heard this <laughs> And I said to Chris, did you hear that noise? It sounded like the little possum's hiss. And he said, yeah. I thought I heard something. He said, but I don't know where it's coming from. Right away, I saw again in my third eye, I saw him inside the filter. I said, that's coming from inside the pool filter. So I walked over to the spa and I lifted up the lid and sure enough, this little guy is underwater and just his two little nostrils are sticking up and he's got his tiptoes and he's swimming, trying to stay alive and he's shivering and I reached in and I pulled him out and he was just, just all traumatized and shivering and tried to scurry away. So I went and got him. <laughs> And I got a towel and I tried toweling him off, but he was just really frenetic and chaotic and distressed. So I just, I brought him in the house and um, I brought him in the house and I put the towel in my lap and then he got very settled and I put my two hands around him and just started doing energy work on him and got him out of the traumatized state. He stopped shaking. Well, first I used a blow dryer in the box from far away because it was it was too noisy but I had to get some of that water off after I toweled him a little but it was too noisy and I knew he didn't like it so I shut it and I figured well I'll give up my night I'll just sit there and hold him inside till he dries and then I'll let him go so I um, I put him in on the towel in my lap and just lightly draped it over him and had my hands still around him loosely not touching him just so I could still radiate healing energy into him and he just went to sleep in my hands. 
And um, I shredded some veggies and tried to feed him, but he wasn't hungry. I did feed him the night we found him and he ate some bean sprouts and went on his way. And we've left little dishes out around the patio so they can help, will help with their food while they're getting some strength. So anyway, he was sleeping in my hands and then the phone started ringing and people started coming and it was getting a lot of demands on me. So Mariana was standing over here. She offered to hold him for a while and I knew he wanted to stay with me, but I had a phone call and I had things I had to do. So I said, okay, I'll pick him up. So I said, you want to go to mama? Go sit with divine mama. She'll give you good love. And so I carried the towel over ahead him just like I held a baby. And I went to set the towel in Mariana's lap with the possum. And all of a sudden he just came to life and he was scurrying and scrambling the way and he ran up to get away and she couldn't quite get him. So I lifted him up with my hands and I brought him to my chest to hold him. And as soon as I did that, he walked right up my chest, up the side of my neck and onto my head. And now he's been on my head for about 20, 30 minutes. And um, I have my hair up, as you can see, in a ponytail today. And he started nesting under my head, pulling it around him and burrowing. And so... Here I am now, it's been about 45 minutes, <laughs> and I got a possum on my head. So, he's very cute. I know I have to put him outside tonight, because I don't want to, he is wild, and I can't, um, I would keep him as a house pet, but we've got a cat, and you can't do that. You can't have a cat and a rodent in the house. It's just torture, even in separate rooms. So, I got to put him out in the yard, and we'll leave some food out, and hopefully he'll become our little house pet. I wish Ariel were here. She would so love this. Now she'll get to see the film of it anyway. Here he comes again. Hi. Oh. Did you give me a kiss? <laughs> I love you too. You go, what are you doing now? What are you doing? Hi. You feeling better now? So we're, we're the adoptive parents since, since the uh, mommy got killed by an owl. Come on, come here. Come here. Is that his head again? Yeah. Come here. <laughs> what are you doing? You want to come see Guruji? There we go. That's how I was holding him, just in a little cave like that. It's drying off. He likes it here like this. You want to be our official possum of the ashram? He's so cute. So he would have just been weaned. He's probably about six or seven weeks old. And most likely the runt of the litter, since um, since his sibling, I say his, I mean it could be a her or two, since its sibling was two to three times its size, and they're born on the same day, then obviously this one is probably the runt. Hi. But we mean that in a beautiful way. I only mean that empirically, not judgmentally. You're beautiful and perfect, and perfectly formed exactly the way you are. Right? Right. You're so cute. I love you too. Look at those little pink paws. You're adorable. You feel better now? You feel better? You're so cute. Yeah. I love you.